This is Golf with Jay Delsing. A two-time All-American at UCLA. Competed in nearly 700 PGA Tour events. Seven professional wins to his credit. Over 30 years of professional golf experience. A member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame and the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Golf with Jay Delsing on a Sunday morning on 101 ESPN. Every Sunday from 8 to 10 with Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Lots coming up on this program. We're going to talk about what we did this past week. We went down to Dalhousie, did a fireside chat at Dalhousie, one of the great clubs that we have here in Missouri down in Cape Girardeau. We'll get to all that first. I got to say good morning to my buddy Jay. How are we doing, Jay? Danny Mac, doing great, man. It was great to be with Cord and Billy Morrow, his staff down there, Nick and, and John and the whole the whole team, uh, Leah, everybody just took great care of us. Boy, you got the cottages there, you get the house you can stay in, and then you have a world-class facility and a world-class golf course. It is phenomenal, kind of a hidden gem down in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. It is. The fact that it's Cape almost belies how great it is. I mean, because you look at Cape and you're like, oh, I'm driving down Highway 55. I'm going to, you know, if I'm not stopping to get gas, you're not going to stop in Cape Toronto. But you got to rethink that. This, they're a national club, Danny, which means, what did Court tell us last night? 15 different states? 15 have, different states mem- are represented as yeah, members. It, yeah. It's su- super cool. So for whenever a, a, a member comes in from a state that's not represented, they put that state's flag up. And, uh, and Billy Morrow and his staff do a great job down there. You've got uh, uh, Jack, who's just, Killing it, just a friendly. I mean, it's. I, I say this all the time. The golf course is awesome. The cottages, the food, spectacular. But it's the people, man. The the people, and that that make that thing world class. We hear J- uh, Jack Nicholas design. And that's what it is down there. Nicholas came in with Cord, went around the facility in terms of the property that they had, made the design, which I always find amazing. You get this plot of land, and these people have a vision on how a golf course should look and how it should play. It's such a, it's unbelievable, Danny. When I, I got the opportunity to hang out with Tom Weiskopf when he designed St. Albans back in, I started uh, my relationship with St. Albans in 1992 when they made the transfer over from Cherry Hills. and But to get to walk around this piece of property, D, we're walking around in fescue. That's, and Tom Watson's a big guy like I I mean, Tom Weisskopf is a big guy like I am. And we're walking in this grass that's at least waist high. And he's talking about, see this I mean, I could see anything. I'm looking at. I'm like, it looks like a wheat field, you know, exactly. with a fescue. And he's like, we're going to take the, we're going to leave this tree. We're going to get rid of all these trees. And I'm like, it's just a four. I, I I just walked around with my jaw open. It was so much fun. Then all of a sudden, I started thinking in a different way because it's like, oh, okay, so we have this rolling hill. I see. We can put a bunker over there. And then all of a sudden, my mind just started going. So it's really, really fun. I love. I would love the opportunity sometime to be able to be a part of that. You know, to to um, because you have guys on. You actually, Danny, you have guys on bulldozers and shapers and all that, and they're all in on this. This grade needs to be X. You know, X slope, and and it's it's really something. Who do you think the the best course designers are? You're going to hear the dies. You're going to hear Nicholas. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear some of the others. But what for you personally? What are the courses that you really appreciate? I'm not a Pete Dye fan by any means at all. I now I understand where he got his, for lack of better words, training his influence, and it's definitely from the European side. D, if you go play in Scotland and 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 places over there, you see some of the quirkiness. But those golf courses aren't green, green, green like ours are. You know, people in the United States think that if your golf course isn't perfect, if it's not green, it sucks. You go over to Europe and it's like, if you have a dry time, your golf course is brown because that's the way Mother Nature put it. And with that, those harder conditions, you know, Danny, you need, when you play a Lynx course, you got to have 
firm fairways. You can design a linksy sort of course over here with soft fairways, and it ruins it because the ball's got to roll and tumble, and you got to be able to. If it's super windy, you play the ball along the ground in Europe, and you still get going forward. You play it along the ground over here, and it doesn't roll. You were talking about as we were visiting with the folks at Dalhousie, Nicholas Design, pretty wide open off the tee. Yeah. That, that's something that's very part generous. Of, yeah, it's yep. very generous, and that's part of his designs, isn't it? It is, and he wasn't a gr- the great. He wasn't the straightest driver of the ball. I mean, I can remember Jack said, "I think he won." Almost five majors, Danny, without ever hitting his driver. That's amazing. You know, it is amazing, but he was so much longer than everybody else back in his day, and um, you know, just trying to keep that thing in between the rails, so to speak, and 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 play. I, I'm a Nicholas, I'm a Jack Nicholas fan, from top to bottom. That I've I've told you his. Rock star wife Barbara has sent me christening gifts for the birth of my children, which is insane. I mean, that's pretty in, cool, insane to me. And I, you still get said, holiday gifts and yeah, holiday cards and exactly all that stuff. Exactly on the on the, the you know the family pictures. There's a thousand grandkids, you know, and I'm like, it, it is so it's so thoughtful, and I love his golf courses. I was never the straightest driver off the tee, so I like a little room, but I loved. I love the putting surfaces themselves because they were usually super true to putt. Now, he's made some pretty crazy greens, some pretty slopey greens, and it shows you how good he was with his irons because he could put those irons in those small little quadrants, and if you miss, good luck trying to get that thing up and down. You know, lots of ups and downs and almost cliff-like edges, really sharp. So um, I'm a Nicholas fan. I would say, Danny, I'm more of an old school. My designers, um, I would say maybe a Tillinghask, A.J. Tillinghask, because he he did the Wingfoots of the World and some of those. Um, an Alistair McKenzie, when when I first went to UCLA, we played this um this, this tournament called the Far Western Intercollegiate, and we played it in Santa Cruz, California, at a place called Pasa Tiempo. That's a hidden gem, folks. If you ever get a chance to get out of Santa Cruz, it's public golf course, and it's awesome. But I got on those greens, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. You know, it's it, it resembled Augusta. Alistair McKenzie also um, designed Cypress Point and finished off some things at Pebble Beach. And so there's some of his influence there. So I'm a McKenzie fan. Some of the older guys in St. Louis, we have a CB McDonald golf course at St. Louis Country Club. That's one of my favorites. Um, A modern day architect. I like some of the stuff that older Tom Fazio did, but then he kind of started getting you know, sometimes I feel like once these these design these architects, Danny, get a little bit of notoriety, they kind of go crazy. And you're like, so meaning they can make it too hard for too the average hard, golfer. Too, way too hard. For example, there's a golf course in town that is a wonderful. First of all, Paul and the staff out at Meadowbrook do a, an amazing job. They got a great active membership. I'm not throwing them under the bus, but I am going to throw Keith Foster under the bus a little bit here with his redesign of the greens at Meadowbrook. I just played there recently with our buddy Mark Travis from Car Shield, and we had a wonderful day. The service, the, the food afterwards, we had a great day. Course is in great shape. Course was in great shape. The greens were so difficult. I mean, I know that maybe between Chris Nagel and myself, we're the best players that play there, period, right? And Absolutely, yeah, for sure. We we said I said to Paul, what do you think – the average number of three putts for your membership is when Paul and I, because Paul cares deeply about this stuff, and we talk, and I, and he said probably four to four and a half around. I said I'm taking the over because there's this quadrants and the slope is so extreme, Danny, and then they're hard to hit. So a, if you can control your golf ball going into the greens, you can put it on the correct side and have a chance. But gosh, man, you miss it, and you're like, whoa, now. I don't know if I could chip it on. I chip it all the way to the other side of the green, and now I got this thing. And so I just, I just think those, those, there's, there's some greens out at Meadowbrook that are just so, so difficult. We were talking uh, during our fireside chat. Speaking of Jack Nicholas, because we got into his design and what made it such a special place, Dalhousie. But then we got into the story of you playing with Jack Skins game and one of the first times that you ever played with him, and that must have been just a nerve wracking experience. Oh hell, I, you know. It's so weird when you start getting those sort of nerves 
the smallest little things, like, I'm not sure I could tee my ball up. <laughs> you know, you start, it just everything becomes so much more, you know, pronounced. And you're like, man, I hope I don't trip and fall down the fairway. You know, Danny, it's just, it's, um, yeah, it, 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 nobody had a present. J- Arnold Palmer did, but nobody had this. It was almost like these players had so much respect for Jack that it was like bow and get out of the way. And and to the players' point, none of them really played in their prime with Jack. So that was most much Tail end more of his career. Yeah, and it was much more of a of a respect sort of thing. So we were playing over at the um, senior skins game over in Maui, and um, there was Fuzzy was there and Nick Price and Mark O'Meara, Fred Couples. Uh, b- bunch of the you know the best players at the time i was kind of a player to be named later so i got thrown in to this whole thing and tom watson was there and it just it as soon as jack came in it was almost like everyone was like okay here's the 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 man just arrived everybody get out of the way and we're all playing for second and it's so weird danny that's what happened we get on this part three and and everybody else you know because jack's older and or i think i was hitting a seven iron and i hit it like 30 feet from the whole fred couples missed the green entirely i think tom (laughs) watson hit the ball in the water you know and then jack gets up there with his five iron and hits it about two feet from the hole everybody's like okay yeah you know there's jack jack wins jack's back yeah so one of the things I want to get into on the show is full swing. So yeah. we'll get into that in yeah. just a moment. We got emails coming in as well. Jay at jdelsingolf.com. We're going to tip our cap though in this first segment. Rob Sidorsik, uh last night at Top Golf, or rather at Family Golf and Learning Center, uh, they said farewell to Rob because Rob is ready to make the move to Springfield, Missouri, take on the director of instruction at Fremont Hills Country Club in Springfield. So congratulations to Rob. Let's tip our cap to him he's one of the best instructors in our area from family golf and learning center absolutely rob he's been a, a, on the show been a buddy of mine for a long long time the tip of the cap is brought to you by the dean team volkswagen of kirkwood we love these guys to get all the vehicles our ve- the, the official vehicle provider of the golf with jay delsing show colin burnt folks is your man he'll get you any sort of vehicle you want their number is 314-966-0303 and rob sidorsik absolutely been a force to be reckoned with here in, in the St. Louis golf scene and just in the national golf scene. Danny, he's played in national club pro events. He's he's played in uh, senior uh, national championships. I've been a good player, been helping people with their game for a long, long time. He's working down with Adam or was working with Adam and, and represent kind of the flagship um, practice facility in, in town, you know, and Adam just destroys it down there just does the, the best thing so we wish robbie the best of luck his family uh and uh you know we'll still see his name because oh, yeah. he's playing on the national scene so we're tipping our cap to robbie we wish him all the best there in springfield i'm sure he'll be making people better at their games down in springfield missouri but we sure will miss him and that's our uh tip of the cap from the dean team volkswagen of kirkwood 314-966-0303 Coming up, we're going to talk about the heater that Scotty Scheffler is on. One the players, one Bay Hill, all that and more coming up. This is Golf with Jay Delsing on 101 ESPN. That was On the Range. Up next, we tee it up as we head to the front nine. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm delighted to welcome the Amateur Players Tour to the Golf with Jay Delsing show. The APT team has worked so hard to establish a national golf tour for amateurs. Folks, don't miss out on this opportunity. If you love golf and ever wondered what all the fuss about tournament golf is, then this tour is for you. We just released the 2024 schedule and it is a beast. There's 21 events currently in the metropolitan St. Louis area with many more to come. But check out these golf courses. Paynes Valley, Ozark National, Stone Wolf, Ambrier, Persimmon Woods, Gateway National, and a 36-hole event on Norwood's West Course, and many more. Okay, so the courses are certainly cool and nice, but what's really neat is the way the events are run and how they are run. The APT team does a fantastic job of closely monitoring handicaps and ensuring a good and fair competition. There are five divisions, a year-long points competition, 
major championships, elevated events, and much, much more. Right now, there are over 6,000 members in 41 different local chapters across the country. And all that's happened in just over five years. Join now and don't miss out on the best tournament golf in the country. Run for amateurs by amateurs themselves. Go to amateurplayerstour.com. That's amateurplayerstour.com. Get ready to watch the legends of golf up close when they compete at historic Norwood Hills Country Club right here in St. Louis. The Ascension Charity Classic will be back again with some of golf's greatest names. Steve Stricker, Padraig Harrington, John Daly, David Duvall, Bernard Longer, Justin Leonard, David Toms, and more will compete returning September 3rd through the 8th. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com for information. Are you driving an out-of-warranty car? It's only a matter of time before your out-of-warranty vehicle is in the shop costing you thousands of dollars. Auto repair costs are up nearly 20% from last year, which is four times the rate of inflation. If an unexpected breakdown happened today, would you be ready for that? Well, now you can be with a plan through CarShield. Even if your car is just over three years old, it's still prone to expensive costs. Your car is more than just getting you from point A to point B. Traveling by car is a way of life. From picking up your kids to going to a new restaurant, cars are a daily essential. When you enroll in a car protection plan through CarShield, you can look forward to the following. The price will never go up no matter how many claims you file or no matter how high the mileage on your car increases. CarShield offers protection plans that start as low as $100 per month. That's $100 per month. They have repair coverage for up to 5,000 different parts of your vehicle. Plus, when your car breaks down and you're stuck on the side of the road, you get 24-7 coast-to-coast roadside assistance. You also get complimentary towing and rental car options. CarShield has my back when my car breaks down, and they can have yours too. Call CarShield today at 800-465-6550 or visit carshield.com. It's CarShield, proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. Hi, this is Peter Jacobson, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. Darty Business Solutions has been enhancing the business of our customers for the last 37 years. How do we do it? Through our expertise in technology, better use of data and analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. We roll up our sleeves and collaborate. We build applications and effectively communicate with our partner clients to bring their goals and objectives to the finish line. Our award-winning Access Point program is a community game changer. With nearly 100 students in the program, mostly young African-American females are making between $55,000 and $60,000 per year right out of high school. That's right, $55,000 to $60,000 a year right after high school graduation. That's when they begin their training. CEO Ron Darty believes the talent is equally distributed, but access to that opportunity is not. So here's Access Point, providing more and more opportunity for those in and around our community. It's Darty Business Solutions. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. To connect with Jay, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. You'll see the latest in equipment, find the latest innovations in golf, and get tips from a PGA professional. That's jdelsinggolf.com. If you're in the market for a newer used vehicle, any maker model, then you need to visit the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. They are the official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. My daughter and I both drive vehicles supplied by Colin and the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. And it's because we know we can trust them. They made the car buying experience painless and easy. And their customer service is second to none. Every single step of the car buying experience was taken care of for us. You can reach Colin at 314-966-0303 and he will answer all of your questions and put your mind at ease. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood has new or pre-owned vehicles to be purchased or leased, whichever you prefer. Once you visit the Dean Team Volkswagen on Manchester in Kirkwood, 
you'll be a customer for life because they will treat you like family. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, the official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. This is the Front Nine, presented by the Ascension Charity Classic. To learn more, visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. Golf with Jay Delsing this Sunday morning on 101 ESPN continues. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin coming to you from the Car Shield Studios. And as always, we're presented by Darty Business Solutions. Players' Championship was great on so many levels a week ago, but you finally had the big players. And at Bay Hill, you had the big players making charges, big players that win. And it just shows you need the big names to be a part of the PGA Tour to move the needle. Well, it just, I mean, the. Danny, didn't you feel like, I mean, we're, we're pretty similar on our stance on live and we're trying to figure out how to get them all back, but didn't you feel like all was right in the world? I mean, yes. as much as I went into that week going, man, it would be nice if John Ron was playing and, and DJ and it still was a great field and I didn't miss him. I mean, I didn't think with that, with the first page and a half of the leaderboards that we had and, and another great point with Bay Hill was the same way. It just, it just, we're like. This is right. You know what? This is in and, and Scotty Scheffler, man, we could talk the entire show about him. He is almost too quiet, almost too nice a guy. I mean, you listen to him. He gave out they I, I you know, we're in the week you know on this stuff. We He's a killer though. He the, is a killer a down the stretch. Ass- oh, he's a quiet assassin. He he's, really is. Yeah. And and he uh he just so he's doing what Tiger did in a way. He's got a long way to go. I'm not, I'm not. I'm just saying. But with the ball striking, which is so odd, Danny. So one of the things that I do, and Curtis Strange talked about this. We'll have to get Curtis back on after the Masters because he'll be active down there. But one of the things that um, we talk about is that all of us golfers are always watching guys swing. You know, we're watching guys swing and we're looking at this, and then you got John Rahm who's flat over here, and you got this guy who's real upright, and you've got Bubba Watson's got this long, flowy thing, and then you, you look at this and that. And I always love watching swings and going, ooh, that's really good. Or yeah. that looks like I think that's going to the right. And for the most part, I got it. You know, I'm pretty decent at it. I, I, I can, like when we play together, I can tell. All right. When Scotty Scheffler swings and his feet go flying out from under him, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, he almost fell over. And then I'm like, right next to the pin. Uh, How is he doing it? I mean, because his feet are flying everywhere. It's, it's probably not something you'd ever teach, but obviously it works for him. No, and you know what's, what's interesting is you would think that he would be wild off the tee. He's longer. I mean, he's the man is six foot three. He's, he's one of the taller champions that we've had on the PGA Tour. And you think, man, that footwork looks so sloppy, like he's almost losing his balance. He's usually number, he's in the top 10 on strokes game off the tee, always. So he has gone from the mallet putter to the spider. Yep. And that's made a huge difference already with his putting, and it's winning him championships and tournaments every single weekend. Do I need to tell you that I ordered two of those? You got two of them. I got two coming. Did, I don't have them yet. I was going to say, I they got come two. Yet. I don't have them yet. But here's what's interesting. So I've been reading a bunch of what he's saying about this. And he said, I wanted to know, because we talked about this a couple of shows ago, because I love the short game, and I, I I like to consider myself almost an expert at that stuff. What what what's his what's the tendencies? Where does he go wrong? And I had a sense that it had, like most of us. We don't aim the thing where we think we aim it. We're a little left, we're a little right, and if we're a little left, we push. If we're a little right, we hook. Tiger's a hook putter. And I think Charlie said that at the PNC. He said, I don't really watch, listen to my dad's reads is when my dad tells me it's right edge. I mean, hello, best yeah. player maybe of you all time. Listen. You might want to listen up a little bit, Charlie. But anyway, he said, because dad likes to hook his putts in there. And um, Scotty Scheffler is a pusher. Uh, so he's a, a left aimer and has this little this little bias there. So um, I was wondering what specifically was he feeling 
doesn't necessarily mean he was doing, but does he was he feeling with the spider? And he said, because there's so much there in the mallet compared to the blade, it's so much easier for him to line up. And he said, that there's this pronounced line on the back of the putter, on the top of the putter, I mean, that he said he doesn't even use the line to line his ball up anymore. He's like, this looks so, and he's like, it just seems so easy to me. And like, he didn't have the greatest of weeks on the greens, Danny, at the players, but he didn't have that, that cliff where he falls off and he's at the end of the pack, you know, and the way that he putted at Bay Hill was just exceptional. So, we're looking at something that we really got to pay attention to. He's not in the field this week at Valspar. I don't know if he'll play at Texas. He's a Texas kid, and a lot of times the Texas the Texans love to support the Texas Open. It's a, the oldest event on our schedule. But we know he'll be at, at, a, at the Masters. And the best thing about the Masters is that the field. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll have. You have the I live love, guys listen, back. I love. I, I don't understand why people have, have thrown so much shade at Bryson DeChambeau, but I love watching that kid play. Absolutely. You know, and then we're going to have DJ there. I love watching DJ with that lopey, you know, gait of his and just, just like he's stalking the golf courses. And the thing that's beautiful, what I want to see at Augusta is I want to see everybody. Everybody on their game. I want to see John. John Rahm's going to be defending his butt off to you, yeah. trying to get this thing. And you know that uh, I really believe that Bryce and DeChambeau one day will win the Masters. I truly believe that. Because, Why specifically him? Because he's so long. Okay. And, and because he can take advantage of and And the other thing, D, he's a world-class. He is a world-class champion he's already won a major he's won six times on the pga tour he shot 58 at a at a liver 59 was it 59 58 58 i believe i I think it was 58 and 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 he's 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 in that that small class of people that have won a u.s open a u.s amateur and an ncaa championship and that's jack tiger and bryson dechambeau well well, go ahead no no so i mean that's that's why he's um uh, his, his biggest my biggest concern for him is his putting Especially around Augusta because it is loopy. It is, you know, and he's so mechanically driven. He looks, but his his pedigree, I really believe he's going to win. I, I don't know about this year, but I really believe he's going to win. I want to go back to putting and make this a quick lesson. Yeah. If you are a bad putter, do you advise folks to line up their putt, put a line, though, on the ball? Like go with the lining of the ball or the lining of the putt and just kind of put those in line and hopefully you get the right line for the putt to drop. Right. So You understand from, what I mean? Yeah, of course. And and that's it's, – so, folks, let's just take – we you, you love to play the TP5. It's great ball. Jeff Thornhill's a great friend of the show. I I play the TP5 as well, but I, I'll play Titleist more often than I play TaylorMade. Either ball's fantastic. But if you look on the on the seam, there's a brand, and it'll say Pro V1 or it'll say TP5, whatever it says on there. So what guys will do, and there's little devices. You can buy them for a dollar. You put a little Sharpie line, it, it'll it'll make it nice. And what, what I would advise is for anything under five feet, on your putts to start trying to line that up folks where you want the ball to start not if it's a straight putt beautiful aim that thing right in the center of the hole if it's right edge putt aim it on the right edge because you want that you want to start all your putts on your line and let the 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 break of the green move the ball not to so many people go oh it's right edge i'm going to aim and then i'm going to hook no and then, and it's left edge. I'm going to aim left and slice it. No, uh, uh-uh. aim left edge and start at left edge. Let the ground move it. This lining of the ball helps so much with the way you look down and perceive the putt, Danny. We drive our car. We shake hands. I'm looking at you right now in the studio, and it's called binocular vision. We look straight ahead, and we're going straight ahead, and that makes sense to us. With golf, I'm looking down at the ground, but my target's out in front of me. And if this perspective, Danny, down at the ground gets off, then my target's going to be off, and you have to make some compensations. And that's why we want to get that line 
right so that you know that that perspective as I look down at the ground to go out to my left or my right, depending if you're a left or right-handed golfer, that that's correct. And when you do that, you're standing behind the ball and you line up your line and you know it's 100% correct. And and assuming that you're reading the putt right. And that's why I'm saying from five feet on in, because for the most part, every single golfer, even – a, a, a male or female beginner is going to be able to line their putts up correctly from five feet on in. Do you think that some of these guys in five or 10 years, and let's just say play devil's advocate here and say that live and the PGA tour come together. Yeah. But some of these wins were minus some of the biggest players that you had, not to say that they were tainted, but do you think we'll look back and go, well, Scheffler won those, but DJ wasn't in there, and Kepka is not in there, and Bryson DeChambeau, and Phil, and some of the top players, P. Reed. These guys weren't in there, so it really wasn't the field that you normally see meaning today if it comes in, comes together that these guys are facing. It's just something I was thinking about. No, I think the same thing. You know what's ironic is that that, that happened several weeks ago in the golf world, but it wasn't brought up by John Rahm or D- Bryson DeChambeau or P. Reed or DJ or, or Brooks. It was brought up by Taylor Gooch, yes, which exactly. is ironic. And I mean, I t- t- well, hats off to Taylor's play. He had a great year last year. But him bringing it up just leaves a funny taste in my mouth. I'm with you. But, Danny, you almost, like, let's say we get this deal done with the PIF. And let's say they say, all right, and, and I'm picking this out of the air. Let's say in 2027, we're going to have this unity, and we're going to start this world tour, but the PGA Tour is going to, for the most part, remain intact, and we're going to supplement the PGA Tour with, let's say, 10 worldwide events. Okay, so we're going to have a full schedule of the PGA Tour, and then we're going to go to Riyadh. We're going to play in Saudi. We're going to play in, uh, pick a spot, Hong Kong. We're sure. going to pick in markets that are going to support it. We'll we'll have a Japan. We already go to Japan for the PGA Tour. So, but I'm just making. So let's just say 10 events. We're going to do that. I really believe you may see something that says, uh, in this era, live players were not included. I really do. I th- I. I kind of hate that yeah but because it was it was it certainly isn't any fault of scotty shefflers that these guys weren't there but i'm going to tell you what here's the deal brooks all, all you guys go ahead take a shot at 20 under par to tpc that's you the know point what I, mean? I mean i mean the numbers you're battling speak against for them. the course too yeah and so speak, he put up the big numbers yeah numbers speak for themselves i mean yep. yeah is it possible one of those boys could have been hot and re- yeah but they didn't. Not likely, and they weren't there. So I, I don't know. I think, Danny, it just depends on how long this thing carries on. Who do you miss the most? I miss uh, I miss Phil, even though he's not in contention I, I, a bunch. Well, because he's such a – He moves the needle. I know, and he says stuff that just makes us laugh and also cry and also shake our <laughs> right. heads, and it gives us so much to talk about on the show. I miss DJ. I miss DJ, too. I miss who Kepka. Do, he's a villain. I, I know. And Kepka's a badass. I mean, he's look at the way he player. plays. And I mean, yeah. he's leading D the first two majors of the year last year. I mean, if if the weather doesn't kind of At Augusta. derail Augusta, yeah. I mean, there's really a good chance that Brooks Brooks wins there. And and I mean, he's focused on the majors. He's obviously figured out the mental side of his game, and he has the physical side to back him up. I mean, you could. You know, not that you and I know anybody that likes to put any dollars on golf. Not and us. No. Just to, we would I, never do that. Asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> the, the, you can never go. You, you heard can, me say that a can, time or two. You can never go wrong with Brooks. One of the things that I have noticed about Brooks, though, he kind of melts over at the Open Championship. A little bit. Yeah, he, he just hasn't. And maybe the golf courses, those are quirky golf courses, and maybe they just haven't suited his eye. But, man, you, you sit him up at a place like Oak Hill, which is, Danny, it's a beast up in Rochester. And he just, he grabbed it. He grabbed that championship on Saturday and went on, on air with Amanda Bolionis Renner now and said, I made a mistake in Augusta. I'm never letting that happen again. And she's like, what'd you do? What are you going to do? And he's like, I'm not, I'm not giving, telling you. I'm not giving you my secrets. And he went out and just crushed it. Yeah. I mean, he took, he took control of the championship in the early holes of that, that final round and just took it on home. I mean, it, it was extremely impressive. So 
who do I miss? How do I answer that? But I All would say, them, I I'm going to I'm going to say my top my five are D Shambo, DJ Brooks, um, Phil, and how about Reed? I know I love Reed because he he might break five rules in the front nine. <laughs> you know what and I you mean? Love that. Just, I love that because he he's got so little self awareness that he's touching the sand and he's saying he doesn't. I don't know, man. Yeah. It's just like you know, Cameron Smith's a great player, but he just doesn't. He's kind of um, quiet, and he's and he's kind of. Uh, I love. I love me some Aussies. I've got some dear friends over there. Ian Baker, Finch, Wayne Grady, those guys, just fantastic. Craig Perry, great, great people. But he just, um, I don't know. Just doesn't I, move the needle for I, you. I felt, I, I do, and I felt like when, when Cam Smith left, I felt like it was almost, this is going to sound horrible, but I'm saying it anyways. I almost felt like it was because he was lazy. And he's like, yeah, now I can go f- hang out with my mates in Australia now, and i got to, and I'm like, dude, you won the British Open. You won the players in a single year. You're on a Hall of Fame track, man. Hang in there. Stick it out for another three or four years. And, and you know, but um, uh, so, yeah, he's he may not be one, but those those other guys, I, I, I miss him. But, I would love to see Taylor. Sorry about it. But I'd love to see Taylor Gooch with this newfound confidence throw it out there. Yeah. Because I, 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 I want to see when what he does – Against some of the big boys, I uh, I want to go back to the Players Championship for a moment. Hell, Wyndham, Danny, we could talk about this for two weeks. It was oh, so great. It, Wyndham Clark, your heart goes out to him because it's a putt that looks like it's going to drop. It looked like more than half the ball is down on eighteen. He played seventeen magnificently to put himself in a position to potentially tie Scheffler, and it just rims out that was hard to watch it was gut-wrenching wasn't it oh danny it's it, so being in that situation before you know you're you can't feel much your 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 palms are sweaty as hell your knees are knocking and you're just so razor focused it's 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 almost oxymoronic it's almost like this can't both be happening but it is and what he did he stuffed it on 16 and didn't make his eagle putt he it's an the best shot of the day on 17 by far, especially under the circumstances. And, you know, it's interesting to watch because he started off with, what, a four-shot lead on Saturday or five, four or five? A sizable lead. You just don't see that. After 36 holes, you don't see people run that far ahead. And it was really interesting to watch him play on Saturday. He didn't play poorly, but you could see he was he was trying to stay the course because what happens is they're like, you know, you've got this voice in your head that says, you know, just play smart. Just he wasn't he, he was he, he had his strategy. He was executing and it was leading the tournament. Don't change a damn thing. Do not change one thing. Get out there and make your four stroke lead eight. That's the goal. And very few Extremely hard to do, especially when Xander Shoffley goes off and shoots seven right. or eight under himself. I mean, so you're going to lose ground when your next competitor shoots seven under or eight under unless you follow suit. So it was interesting to watch him play because he hit a few more looser shots on Saturday and even on Sunday. But but then coming down the stretch, what he did was just super, super impressive. And to have it not – it, everything's out of his control. He he handled everything he could, and then to have it lip out like that was gut wrenching. Got to start thinking of him, and the, you didn't think of him this time last year. Good player, not great player. Now he's one of the great players on tour. I think you would agree. U.S. Open. He's part of the Ryder Cup. He's close to the Players Championship. It just seems like he's in contention now, consistently every single week. Yeah, no question. He's won three tournaments in the last what six months. It's right. One of those is U.S. Open. He just won at Pebble Beach, and 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 you know. A, Strong fashion with, a, I think, a shot of 62, I think, out there. So, yeah, a lot of really good things. And then to see him, it's just refreshing to see it time again, time and time again. I mean, he had a good tournament at Bay Hill. He had a good, you know, for the most part, the Players' Championship was his 
his to lose. To lose. Yeah. I mean, he put himself in that's in such a great spot, and and so I I think what you're seeing is a player that's really really starting to believe in himself. The work uh, we'll talk about full swing as you said later, but I think it was very revealing. We'll talk about some of the stuff I think that was important there, but. I mean, he's a great story. Yeah, I, I will. Say, I got to say this: I don't like the fact that he said a couple of weeks ago, "Yeah, I think we should have less players on my on the PGA Tour." I'm like, dude, if that was you three years ago, you're gone. Exactly. You don't even you're get one the of those chance. Guys. Come on, man. You know, read the room a little bit and give the guys the same chance you had. Let's. Well, 144 players, Danny, is not too many. I don't care. I. If there's a sponsor here and there that's going to have a problem with it, then then make sure that they're associated with some different sort of field. But for the most part, man, we cannot go less. We need more options for some of these great players because, Danny, they're Hall of Famers in the waiting. We've, we've said that time and time again. Folks, if you get a chance to go to, I'm going to say this, the Corn Ferry Tour, get out there because they're future Hall of Famers, future Ryder Cup stars, on both sides of the uh, both sides of the pond, playing out there. The other part of the uh, tournament that stuck out to me was that Xander Shoffley again in contention and could not close it out. I mean, he's right there to win that championship. And how many times could you say that he was right there so many different times in so many different tournaments and just has not been able to really get over the hump? Right, it's, it's so true. And he's won seven times. He's a great player. I love his style. You want to talk about? an assassin. He's quiet. He goes about his business and he started, he started talking about one. And I've read this Danny. That's really interesting because his dad, Stefan is his coach and kind of sports psych guy, the whole thing. And he said their whole thing, since he's been a little kid, the entire message was, um, commit, execute and accept. And he's like, I committed, I did not execute, and now I'm up here accepting what I did and answering your questions. And I can tell you, he did not want to be there. But he he based it was really surprising because to watch him hit, he hit equal, not not quite as spectacular a shot, Danny, on 17 at TPC as Wyndham Clark did. But he had a beautiful shot. At Absolutely. Him. I mean, his was what seven feet, six, maybe yeah, six, six six seven feet from the hole. Again, it was a downhill putt, but. That putt and that hole location is so common that you're not going to get a misread, okay? And what I mean by that is he's practiced that putt before. So he had the comfort of knowing this is, I know what this putt's going to do. But you could tell, he said, as soon as I hit it, started too far left. It didn't have the speed. It, it just, he just didn't execute. I mean, and, and. It's hard. Let's face it. He's in the same position as um, Wyndham Clark is. His he's in the last group. His palms are sweaty. His knees are knocking. He can't feel much, and yet he's still. You know, he just came off a near eagle at sixteen, and he's right in the middle of this thing. So, if he knocks that putt in, there's a you know the, a lot of different. I mean, we got we got a tied championship, and who knows what? You know who no one is really talking about, and maybe I'm wrong about this. Is Brian Harmon? I, you know, know, he wins the British. He's part of the Ryder Cup team, and he was right in contention to win there. Anybody you know pick him to win the British? Last that would year? be me. That would be me, dude. How did you do that? It was a wild pick because he's you what know what in he, the hell he's steady off the tee, man. But why didn't we put? A few shekels on 25 it. Twenty five cents. We'd have been rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Unbelievable. We we uh, we'll bet on a lot of different things. We didn't do that. I one. don't know why we <laughs> missed that. But uh, anyway, but um, no, you're absolutely right. I I almost feel like I, I got to say, put this out there too. Watching him stand over the just ball, Danny, you. it just makes me nervous. You know, I don't get nervous, but I'm like, dude, you got to pull the trigger. Would he be the kind of guy, if you were paired up with him, that you would stare away? Oh, like, look away, 100%. Just, you can't so, watch it. So it's hard I, to watch on TV. So, Danny, what I started doing, because there are plenty of guys that I play with like that, that you would just this quirkiness, right? Yeah. And when you spend all this time with them, four, five, six hours, and and multiple times, you're like, you're so you prepare yourself the night before. This is another tiger effect. We started getting doctors that would come out to the PGA tour all the time and said, you guys are, you, you're, it's dangerous. You need eye coverage. You need, you know, like our, our optical guys, they make great lenses. You need lenses. And like David Duvall, there were like 
three guys that wore sunglasses had nothing to do with protecting your eyes. It had all the, to do with you know this personal preference. David and, Duvall with the Oakleys with the that Oakleys circled and, the eyes. Yeah, and Robert Gamez yep. used to wear anyway. So um, we started. I started wearing sunglasses, D, but I couldn't hit a ball. Here's what we also didn't know. And another shout out to um, to uh, Gary and, and the Popticals. No polarization. It distorts the ball. And if we'd have known that, I would. But we all had polarized glasses on at the time. And as a kid, you know, those those guys probably got used to it. But what I would do, Danny, is I'd take them off and put them on the top of my head, just like your glasses are now. And when I was finished hitting, I put them, put them down. And if somebody like Brian Harmon was waggling 77 times over the ball, Glasses, glasses go down, going down and off and I, and I close my eyes. I don't, I can, I can look like I'm watching him. I don't have to look away and not look, not, I, that just drives me nuts. It's hard to watch. It I, just, I tell uh, you, it's hard now, to watch. If you'll recall when Sergio Garcia first came to the PGA tour, Danny, we counted, he milked the club like 23 times. We're like, hit the, let's go. Come on. Let's. So there are guys with a lot of quirky mannerisms that, that, you know, down go the shade, turn around, close your eyes, just like, let's get through this. Where are you at with Rory right, right now? He's got a lot of top 20s, top 15s, top 10s. You know, you can basically bank on it. He's going to be a top 15 guy for the most part, it seems like. But it's just final days, man. He's really not in contention, is he? No, no it's a head scratcher, Danny. I don't know. Like, when we were coming into Augusta and this time of year last year, you and I were licking our chops. We're like, man, we'd really love to see this guy knock off, get his uh, career grand slam, get his fifth major. He hasn't won a major championship in 10 years. Right. I mean, the the further that gets removed, the bigger and bigger the hurdle. And you know what's remarkable is that this kid is never out of the top 15 in driving strokes gained off the tee. So he is putting himself in position a lot. Which which means, what else is going haywire? We blame his putting a lot. We see him go through his struggles with his putting. Typically, if his his strokes gain off the tee is always so high that if we get his strokes gain putting up there, he wins. Right, you know, and something just seems to go haywire. He he had a, some puts a couple in the water. All of a sudden, he's taking sixes and sevens. He made ten birdies the first day. And exactly, shot, you know, shot shot sixty five with a double bogey and a bogey. Yes, we had three penalty shots in there. I I don't know what to make of it. I, you know, I was thinking, you know, maybe he's gonna he's gonna show up in Augusta and and be uh, a force to be reckoned with, Danny. I just don't know, but he, it's it's a head scratcher. I don't know if it's if this is getting in his head. He's made so much money. He's he's. Forget what he's made off the golf course because that's going to be massive. He's going to get a huge payday here with this stupid, you know. When the PGA Tour th- players does some, their equity right. plan, I'm like, whatever that is, seven hundred. It's going to be seven hundred and fifty million dollars spread out to the thirty six guys. Rory's going to get a massive chunk of that. I don't know if he's getting. He just gets into these comfort zones, Danny, and 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 and. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. We can talk about him a little bit on the Netflix as yeah. well because he wound up finishing second to Brooks Kepka at the PGA Championship last year, but it wasn't close. Right. It wasn't like, oh, I almost won. No, you didn't. It, Brooks needed – it would have been a, a – you know, a, his train to completely fall off the rails for that to happen. So it was a great finish, but it wasn't – it wasn't close. It wasn't in question. So, I don't know what to make of him. He's making a lot of mistakes with, with, um, with his swing. His putting is 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 really streaky. So, I don't know what to make of it. But I I don't like his chances in Augusta. And maybe that's the perfect time for him to have no pressure on him and to come in and play well. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. We call this golf with Jay Delsing. It's every Sunday on 101 ESPN from eight to ten. Jay mentioned. The Netflix series, Full Swing, we'll get into that momentarily. Also, emails, j at jdelsinggolf.com, j at jdelsinggolf.com. We're coming to you from the Car Shield Studios, and we're presented by Darty Business Solutions. Powers Insurance and Risk Management is a family-owned local business that's been helping our community for over 200 years. In the always confusing world of insurance, Powers Insurance provides clarity, 
exceptional service, and the latest in cutting-edge products to deliver the highest quality in property and casualty coverage, as well as strategic planning consultation services. Powers Insurance and Risk Management will partner with you. That's right, they'll partner with you to customize the right coverage for you and your family. Tim Davis, Chief Operating Officer, will personally sit down and talk you through the ins and the outs of your policies. They are experts at helping you control your workplace expenses, helping to guarantee the safety that you and your employees need. You can visit them at powersinsurance.com. That's powersinsurance.com for all your insurance needs. This is Chris Nagel. And you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. So you've been hearing me talk about one of our community's greatest contributors and most philanthropically inclined companies. Yes, of course, I'm talking about Marcone. They're the largest distributor of General Electric appliance parts in North America. Did you know that Marcone is also the largest and most trusted supplier of commercial and residential appliance parts, HVAC, plumbing, commercial kitchens, and pools and spas? All of that's in North America as well. That's right, Marcone does all that. Marcone is committed to supporting our first responders, all the branches of service in our military, our police and firefighters, and many more. From the viewing deck at the Ascension Charity Classic, founded in honor of our military heroes, to their commitment to Reese Across America program, Marcone is here for you and your family, as well as your community. That's Marcone official sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. Hi, this is Adam Best from Family Golf and Learning Center. At FGLC here in Kirkwood, we feature a double-decker driving range, two large grass tees with Tahoma Bermuda grass. You want to work on your short game? We have a short game area too, which features a 20,000 square foot green, three bunkers, and zoysia surrounds. Also at Family Golf and Learning Center, don't forget about our nine-hole par three course, the indoor trackman simulators, and our performance center. If you're looking for the best golf instruction, regardless of skill, we can help. Find out more at FamilyGolfOnline.com. That's FamilyGolfOnline.com. Family Golf and Learning Center. We make St. Louis better at golf. Do you remember the golden rule? I'm sure you do, but just in case it goes like this. Treat people the way that you'd like to be treated. At People's National Bank, that one statement is the cornerstone of what this bank is all about. Locally owned, with 23 locations in Southern Illinois and the metropolitan St. Louis area, People's National Bank parlays a robust menu of commercial or personal banking services you could possibly need with a friendly yet hardworking Midwestern attitude. Maybe you just want to do business with a bank whose entire team lives in the same neighborhoods as we do. If you're like me and doing business with someone you trust is important to you, then People's National Bank is the bank for you. Jason Rantham, local president, is here for you to call and he'll answer any questions you may have. His personal cell is 314-974-2243. You can also find us online at peoplesnationalbank.com. People's National Bank is here for all of your banking needs. This is Jim Hackenberg, founder of Orange Whip and Orange Whip Training. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The Back Nine is presented by Pro-Am Golf, located in Brentwood. See what Pro-Am Golf can do for you. Golf with Jay Delsing on a Sunday morning rolls on. We're presented by Doherty Business Solutions, coming to you from the Car Shield Studios. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Again, we do this every Sunday morning on 101 ESPN from 8 to 10. Emails coming up later in the show, jay at jdelsinggolf.com. We always love getting feedback on the show and a lot of questions about a game we love, the game of golf. Okay, I want to get into the Netflix series, love Season it. 2. It's full swing. Uh, just generally, you've seen all the episodes. So generally speaking, what did you think? And there's a lot of different ways we're going to go with this. Where was my private jet when I was playing? That's the first <laughs> so thing I think It of. didn't resemble anything that you had. No, man. It didn't resemble anything that I know. I'm like, I don't see anybody staying at the La Quinta. 
you know, or the Red Roof Inn and Racket Club that I used to stay in all the time. Couple I mean, swans in the uh, the, the, the lobby when you got I'm in like, there. Wait a second. I mean, not every place I stayed at Denny had room service, man. <laughs> right. I mean, like, um, yeah. You enjoyed I, it though. I did enjoy it. I did. I did. I think it's. I. I think it's good. There's a lot of crying. I'll say this. There, there was. And you know, and I'm a crier, which sucks. But that's what. I, that's just the way I am. But there was a lot of crying. There's. There are tears by Zach Johnson. There are tears by Gino Benelli. There's uh, Joel Damon. There's. Uh, you know, a lot of people getting emotional. Luke Donald. I got to tell you what. I let. And I'll just say this. My biggest. Coolest. We had Luke on the show. We're going to get Luke back on the show. I thought he did a great job as a in the lead an, an uh, analyst seat for NBC. And you know what, Danny? There's just something about that the Euros do that they're able to come together year after year after year. And Whistling Straits, the last cup we won that was over here in uh, what was it, twenty one? They just got outplayed. They, they, they had nothing to do with unity. Art, we just we just absolutely whipped their tails. And when it comes to Marco Simone and this last year in Rome, they repaid the favor. Absolutely, they played better than it's us. It's been thirty they, plus years since the Americans won on foreign soil. Now I know, and they 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 played better than us. They hold more putts. They chipped in. They did whatever it took, and it was impressive. It was impressive. And Luke Donald was a guy who was organized, had a plan. He knew what he was doing. I loved, I thought one of the neatest parts of that series were the phone calls. I was now, just going to ask you about that. That to me was the best part. D, they didn't show any of the turndown calls that both captains had to make other than Keegan Bradley. And the Keegan Bradley one hit hard to me. I felt like he deserved it. I felt like, so I think one of the, the other things that was really obvious to me was the club, and I'm going to call it the Jordan Spieth, the Rick Fowler, the the uh, JT. JT, and the Zach Johnson club. I thought it was interesting that now these guys all live in Jupe, except Zach. He lives in Sea Island, and they're all staying together on the road, and there's a quite a bit of age gap. So Zach is in his upper mid to upper 40s, and those guys are right at 30. I thought it was weird. I thought it was Ryder Cup specific that they were staying. I would love to know in two more years, Zach still playing the regular tour, not the champions. Are they staying together? Probably not. I don't know, man. And so I really felt for Keegan Bradley. I, I really did too. Felt that was tough to watch that. It was. He went out. He knew what he needed to do. He won, especially being a New Englander. He won at Hartford. It's a great championship. The fans there, Danny, are spectacular. Some uh, Amazing how they turn out. For him to go out and take that championship was just awesome. And then I can't imagine how he felt. How about he hasn't unpacked? His suitcase from the last Ryder Cup. That Wasn't he that was, something? I know. That was the, uh, just the, the, the back stories on these guys is what I love to see. Yeah. And what it means to them, for most of them, to represent their country. Yeah. I thought it was interesting, too, how they got into both sides of not having the live players. Yeah. And obviously, there was Kepka was a part of it, and that was going to be a gimme after what he'd done in the majors. But... You know, you didn't have DeChambeau, you didn't have Reed, you you didn't have a few other guys that you had a chance to pick from, and they stayed away from them. They just stayed away from those guys. And 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 for Luke, Luke Donald, he didn't even have, he the, the, option. Opportunity. He yeah. didn't have the option. So Sergio was off the table. Um, Lee Ian, Westwood. Lee Westwood off the table. Ian Poulter off the table. Paul Casey off the table. Four huge names for the last 20, almost, yeah, 20 years, these guys have been Mainstays. Yep. They, they've been breaking American tarts right and left. And for them, I thought it was interesting. One thing stuck in my mind. I don't know if you thought this or not. Maybe it's just a one-off for me. When they talk, when Luke Donald, so the visiting team picks, chooses first. And, and so Zach picks his team. Luke said Zach could have gone a lot of ways. And he went with the way he went. And I felt like Luke was surprised that there were some people that he was expecting to have to compete with that he didn't have to compete with. Sure. And and I thought that was, I thought that was interesting. And to your point, I mean, Bryson DeChambeau could have been picked. 
uh, DJ DJ could have been picked, and I think that that's where you draw the line. I don't think Patrick Reed didn't have uh, uh, um, uh, good enough. Uh, uh, his form was not nearly good enough to 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 merit that. Taylor Gooch, you could make an outside argument for, but I don't know. Uh, I, I really don't think he was ever in the consideration. But when you think of the Keegan Bradley, I mean, when you think of some of the talent that you're leaving off, and Danny, the Americans have had to leave off many more younger, stronger, better players than the Euros did. DJ, an older guy, but still he's a special sort of talent. You could make an easy argument that DJ is better than and more relevant than Garcia, Casey, Poulter, or Westwood. And you could, and, and, in my opinion, DeChambeau for sure, you know, and Brooks winds up making the team, um, which is a, which was a no brainer. I mean, winning a major is just an absolute no brainer. Were you familiar? And I lo- I love to ask the you know you're not the average golf fan, but I love asking the golf fan. Were you familiar with how the points went? Did you know about the majors? Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I figured you did. I thought that was interesting. I thought they did a nice job of that. One of the things, Danny, that I think you're talking about the automatics and then the yeah, bids that and, went yeah, out. Yeah, the yeah. top six and how you how you accumulate points. Right. So the major championships, when you win, you get double and things like that. And that's why Kepka was the easy choice. He yeah. was in. Right. Dan Rappaport made an interesting comment that I thought was uh, way off the mark, and um, and so did Dylan uh, Dathier. Um, they they said inferred that when the live players went to live, they were going to just ride off into the sunset and not be relevant in the world of golf anymore. And I was like, who thought that? Maybe Phil Mickelson because of his age. But then again, Phil comes up last year and turns second up at Augusta. And, and his he's back right nine is as good as anybody. 31. Right. I mean, come on. Right. So, but I mean, I never thought that. I know you never thought. No. You didn't think DJ was going to go over there and not – ever play well again and the same with with uh Kepka and the same with Bryson. Now Garcia hadn't played where the smoke and neither his Westwood, neither his Poulter. The guys are you know, they're past it. Sure. I, I thought it was interesting though, going back to the Ryder Cup here just for a moment. Yeah. I thought it was interesting with the Europeans, uh how they were selected and the, the just the thought process that went into it. But the fact that I just thought they had a lot more camaraderie. Yep. It, they they got over there early. They played rounds. They were talking about strategy. It just seemed like it, and maybe as part of how they showcased it on Netflix, but it looked to me like they had way more camaraderie than the American team. But Danny, and the U.S. didn't play for five weeks. That was the killer. That was the, If you had to point to one thing, I, I mean, actually, it all comes down to execution. Don't get me wrong. They, perhaps they could have, but as an athlete, I've been through this before. I've not been on a Ryder Cup, but I know what it's like coming off of five weeks off. you got to be kidding me. Sure. You cannot, you cannot duplicate that kind of stress, that kind of prep. And for the Euros, they had, I think, 11 of the 12 just played in a tournament the week before or within 10 days or something like that. Now, I, I made that statement about the younger players that the U.S. have lost. Now, the, the, now the Euros have lost Terrell Hatton and John Rahm. So those, I, I'm not discounting those guys. They are every bit as important to the European uh, European side as our our guys were. But they weren't gone for that Ryder Cup. They were a part of it, and um, they absolutely were a big part of it. Maybe you can explain to those that have watched it or those that hadn't, but maybe watched it on NBC when it was taking place but Rory with the caddy and the kerfuffle that took yeah. place with that that yeah. was interesting to see a near brawl basically break out after it had been dropped and after the the putt had been dropped and I now agree. it's dark outside guys are getting in their cars to go back to the hotel yep. and all of a sudden you're looking at a potential shoving match between these two I love it I love it I mean first of all it just tells you how much these guys want it well, explain what happened, too. Yeah, so so Patrick Cantley is in the last match with Wyndham Clark, and the U.S. is absolutely getting our ass handed to us. We have to have any cho- chance. The U.S. is typically, historically, super, super strong, Danny, in the individual matches, which go on on Sunday. So we need this extra point to even have a chance. And Rory is playing with Matthew Fitzpatrick, who has been making every single putt imaginable there is this massive social media 
thing that comes out from um, a Sky reporter. His last name is Weir. I can't remember what his first name is. But he comes out and says, Patrick Cantley refuses to wear a hat in the Ryder Cup because he wants to get paid. And so he's got this personal, he did not wear a, uh, a hat, Danny, in the Ryder Cup at Whistling Straits right. either. Okay? He did not. So now this runs through the crowd like a warm knife through butter. And all the people are chanting at him. And Patrick Cantley has no idea. He just knows he's not wearing a hat. And so now they're chanting him, how's your wallet? What's your, uh, show me the money. Where's All of your these, hat? Where's, where's your, your hat? hat? Where's yeah. your, and, and so now the other U.S. players and all the guys on the European side know what's going on because they've been on their phone. Patrick Cantley's playing with Wyndham Clark. He has no idea what's going on. He doesn't know. He understands these guys are ribbing him, but he's loving it. Yep. And he's feeling it. So down the stretch, Cantley birdie 16. He bur- or no, he makes a big par putt, I think, on 16 to keep the match going. Birdie 17 to win the hole. And now has about a 33, 35 foot putt. With for birdie on 18 to potentially win the match. Now, Matthew Fitzpatrick, who's been holding everything, has got about a, a 30 footer, and Rory's got something around 29. So there's 29 feet. Wyndham Clark, unfortunately, has made par and not going to be relevant here. So Patrick Kennedy putts first, and it's near dark, Danny, which was interesting. The Netflix showed it in a much more realistic uh, yeah. d- Daylight, NBC Twilight, did, yeah. sort of, uh, than yep. NBC did. So NBC had the irises, though, and you know this way more yeah. than I do, but it changes the way that the, the perspective for the viewer looks. So Patrick Cantley holds this putt, and now all the U.S. players are taking their hat off and going, here's your hat. And and, and Joe LaCava, and we'll get Joe on the show. I would be caddy. Sh- yeah, he's, he's a caddy for Patrick Cantley, yep. who is, listen, he is as for- fiercely loyal a guy as you'll ever meet. He stands on the green inordinately long time with his hat off, protecting his man, so to speak. Now, Rory and Matthew, Matthew Fitzpatrick had already putted. I got that wrong. So now Rory's got the last putt. If Rory can hold this putt, they have the match. If Rory misses the putt, U.S. gets a full point, and we need this full point. Joe LaCava is in the way. I'm just going to say it. I love Joe, and I love the red, white, and blue. He shouldn't have been standing there that long. Stand there, get off, let Rory have this. This is Rory's stage now. Patrick Cantlay had all he wanted. Nobody was interrupting his processes and all this stuff, and Joe was in the way. Now, was he standing in Roy's line? No. Was he? He was just in a in a spot that there was no one else on the green, Danny. Right. And so he, Roy's got this twenty nine footer to potentially tie the match, and he's got to ask Joe to get out of the way. And that's just something that doesn't happen. Yeah, it's an unwritten rule. You get out of the way. Get out of the way. Let the guy putt. And then you want to go tackle somebody, you know, have at it. Right. By the way, I'm taking Jill LaCava. Okay, it's all (laughs) he's got. Big dude, man. Yeah, if it comes to that. Plus, it's his attitude, D. It's his attitude. He's... He didn't care. No, he's bleeding red, white, and blue. And I'm, I'm with my man, and you're giving my man grief. And it's me and my man against you. Let's go. Yeah. So Rory misses the putt, and then... Shane Lowry was like, Joe, get off. And and I got to say, Shane Lowry was right. Joe was, it was, he just, I don't know if the moment just overtook him. I don't know what, but he was, he just was, he just was in a spot. Look, stand there, make your point, and then go. Let Rory have the green. Get on the side of the green. Because if you notice where all the other guys were, no one else was standing there. No, no, no. It was a, quite a ways out. And so this thing, this thing got, you know, got out of hand and neither side was backing down and it's just not in golf's dna to have a brawl but i guess if it it's were a gentleman's game right this is what but man you know tempers were flaring yes, and they were and they wanted it and what's interesting is you had this thing where where Bones McKay, he's not backing down, and he's going to support Joe, and he's going to support his guys, and he's caddying for JT, and and he wasn't taking any guff from Roy either. So nobody was nobody was backing up. And to Shane Lowry's credit, he got Rory in the car, got him out of there because all all the Euros had everything to lose, Danny, and nothing to gain by this. And if the U.S., and I don't know if it was intentional by Joe, but if the U.S. could pull them in and get them off 
of what this role they've been on and all this momentum because this had the potential to turn the tide. It really, really did. And it made it way, made Sunday's uh, uh, individual matches way more interesting. And so what wound up happening is Luke said, I don't care what happened. I, n- I love how much you care. Just use it for fuel. Don't let it take away I, our I thought fire. he did a great job diffusing it. He did. He did the right thing and just diffused it. He said, hey, it happens. Yep. Like, let's like, like, let's not deny it. Let's not. He didn't. You notice Luke Donald never called any U.S. player out. Nope. He didn't want to fuel any of this negative fire. He did. a. In fact, Danny, that should go down as one of the one of the shrewder coaching maneuvers. Do you remember when C- Coach Craig Berube here in St. Louis that. with the hand pass and all the referees miss it and we, the St. Louis Blues, lose in overtime to the San Jose Sharks over a clear violation that just got missed. And he diffused it. And he, he said, said we're moving on. did you see what happened? And, and the guy said, yeah. He said, okay, next question. I'm not talking about it. Yep. It's over and done. And that's basically what Luke Donald said. He said, hey, it happened. I love your passion. Use it for fire. Use it for fuel. Don't and and to to their point, the Euro. Listen, Europeans. I wanted red, white, and blue to win. The Euros deserved it. They earned it. Hats off to them. Let's uh, continue talking about full swing here in season two because there's some really interesting individual shows that were dedicated on full swing. Yep. And you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing, presented by Darty Business Solutions. We're coming to you from the Car Shield Studios. That's Jay, I'm Dan. Uh, I did want to get into Wyndham Clark. Now, we mentioned yep. it earlier, uh, his use of a sports psychologist, and it looks like it's changed his career, the trajectory of his career, and it's made all the difference in the world. Yeah, and he did not go into this thing easily. He did not want to do it, Danny. He was like, man, I, you know, he had said he talked to a counselor when his mother passed away. It was not a great experience. You know, the the counseling in those words, Danny, we've all been sad in our lives. We've all had things happen to us. We've had people die. It sucks. You should be sad. But sometimes you get people that think they need to say something to you, and you're like, dude, shut up. This is not appropriate. You don't even know what you're talking about. You know, so sometimes you get that situation that arises and it leaves a real sour taste in your mouth. You know, Danny, when we've been, at, we've been at funerals for our fathers and things like that. There's nothing anybody can say. Your dear friends know that. And just them showing up is all they need to do. Just be quiet. So, so he winds up going and seeing her and, and I can't remember her name, but it was interesting to watch. I feel like even Netflix did a nice job of watching this progression as Wyndham started trusting her more and more. You know, he started seeing more. The, she basically said he was an angry golfer. And the culmination you know? was the U.S. Open, but yep. to get yep. that whole pathway from when it started to the culmination of the U.S. Open was fascinating to me. Well, Wyndham says he's always been a good putter, and he's been putting like crap on the PGA Tour, and all of a sudden he started doing this stuff with her and started making putts. He had some good finishes. He had a couple top top ten finishes, and then all of a sudden he said it all came together at um, the Wells Fargo for him getting his first PGA Tour win. And then she says... So much of his anger, his fear, his doubt, and all of these demons that he'd been packing around and carrying around with him all went away. And you can see, I mean, we're, we're looking at a guy that's won a major. And I mean, aside from Scotty Scheffler, he's playing better than any other U.S. player no right now. There's no question about it. I mean, if you had to go to war right now, well, there's got to be a President's Cup this year. Wyndham Clark's got to be on that team, Danny. Have you used a sports psychologist? I have. I, Not I've to used pry Bob, too much, but uh, yeah, I've used Bob Rotella, and I've got a chapter in his book, and I think I threw modern psychology back about fifteen years <laughs> with some of the crazy so stuff. You have a chapter in his book, and he's widely regarded as the guy in the game of golf. Yeah, he is. Bob is. Bob's a great guy, and he. We just talked about uh, Danny, and it's it's simplifying. We just had a nice little session with your daughter Avery on the golf course the other day, talking about listen, when you're standing over the ball. It's go time. It's you and target and feel, and that's it. And if you start getting, oh, what ifs or make sure's or all that, 
I said, I said, those, we would throw those, Danny, into the mental air bucket. We, th- that is a mental air, and it is, has nothing to do with your swing. If you're not fully committed, we can't work on your golf swing. And that's what, that's what we're going with. And that's when, when I would stand up there and be fearful about my ball going in the water, and there's water to the right, and it's this big duck hook to the left, I didn't go work on that swing. I went and worked on my mind and getting better at my commitment. Interesting. And saying this is it about this isn't about my swing. My swing's gonna be haywire if I'm not committed. And it's the same for everybody on the PGA tour. How many guys do you think are using them? Oh, ninety five percent. Is that right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And some are some will admit it, some won't admit it. Danny, back in the day I was struggling and I didn't realize, you know, probably eighty five percent of the guys were using it, but back in the eighties and nineties it was a little more taboo. We didn't talk about that stuff that much. And there wasn't social media, there wasn't all of these other avenues, you know, for people to um to tell their stories and, and, and have it have it brought out so those are the top guys they went through the Ryder cup and then you have some guys that are just trying to not hang on but improve their standing in the game and joel damon was one of those and yep. his caddy was a great part of this too yep. the relationship between a caddy and the player and it's more than just what's happening on the course it's a life and what they're doing with their families i, I thought that one was great showing them behind the scenes on a plane in a bar restaurant you know and crying to each other about hey we need to get this thing going else we're not going to be here very long well gino basically said if you don't go see this guy i'm done I'm done. And, and, and there's no question that Gino is Joel's best friend in life. And he's just told him it's an ultimatum. Because, first of all, Gino's not wealthy like Joel is. Sure. Joel hit all this success, Danny, from f- when full swing season one came out. He was the, the big guy. winner. He was, he was the guy. I mean, he's got, he's got all sorts of patches all over his body. He's flying privately now. You know, he's, he's won one tournament in his career and had a, a really nice career, but nothing like Ricky or Jordan or, or, or JT or, or, or any of those guys, uh, Colin Morikawa. And so, yeah, Gino's like, man, I, I gotta make a living. And, and, he, and he goes, right, it was interesting because Joel said to him when he gave him that ultimatum, he goes, you got another bag? And he goes, no, I don't want another bag. <laughs> right. I want a caddy for you, but I want your to, for you to pull your head out of your butt and let's go. You're a good player. You're running yourself. And, and, and um, it's, it's interesting how um, I forget what Joel's wife's name is, but she's basically said, I got to tell him. This is this is not this sustainable. Is not yeah. You're a good dad. You're a good husband. You're a terrible golfer right now, and you are your your approach sucks. And you could see he was. I think Joel was another guy, Danny, who when he had cancer or he had some experience with us with a psychologist, it did not go well, and it didn't leave a good taste in his mouth. Now we just talking about the Players Championship. How about this? Joel finishes T11, makes over $600,000. Yep. Do you know what that means for Gino? That's a $40,000 payday. It's pretty good. Pretty good. That'll spend. I uh, I enjoyed seeing behind the scenes the family life, too. Yeah. I, I don't want to overlook that. The wives, the children, how they travel, do they travel, uh, trying to make schedules work. I, I'm sure there was some flashbacks for you about how you were traveling with your kids, going town to town, and it, it probably resonated with you. Oh, 100%, Danny. I don't think there was any person on the PGA Tour that traveled more with my kids than than uh, with their kids than I did. I brought them out as much as I possibly could, so much to the fact that I put my oldest in a kindergarten out in California. Is that right? Yeah, I didn't so know we, that. Yep, so Mackenzie went to, to, uh, to school out there for a little bit and stuff. Until it was... To the point where they needed, I believe, in the socialization of schooling and all that stuff with your classmates. You need to have friends. You need to figure all that stuff out. And 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 but we did stuff like that. And oh man, we could terrorize a hotel, bro. <laughs> we could terrorize. And my kids loved a swimming pool sure. like nobody's business. So I, I I did like some of that the the family stuff. It's just um, it's just a Danny. Honestly. It, Netflix looks like a bunch of millionaire babies running around. You know, it just, I was like, wow. Well, one of them, I wasn't sure though. One of them, I, I got to interrupt you, but yeah. Tom Kim, yeah. 
he took a lot of trouble from the veterans, and he's 20 years old, and he's a hell of a player, and he's going to win big on the PGA Tour. I don't know if you agree with that, but I think he will because yeah. he's only 20. I'm a huge fan. He's won three times. He's only 20 years old. Second Abs- at the British. A- absolutely. Second at the British. He won the Shriners after the British. He's yeah. won three times. But how much trouble yeah. he was taking. The, 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 you know, He's a young guy, and they know it, and they're going <clears throat> right at him in the locker room. I thought that was great. Well, what about what he said? I mean, he said some really uh, – some. It, it just shows you how young he is and also you know culturally he was born in seoul south korea right so he goes he says to to jordan he goes they have peanut butter and jam in there in <laughs> right. the players room and he's like yeah and my you can play crisscross applesauce with my kids and have a peanut butter and jelly <laughs> right. or something you know i was like Wow. So, but I mean, I think, I think, um, you know, Tom Kim couldn't find his way around Augusta. He couldn't find a locker room. He couldn't find player dining. He winds up in the champion's Champions, locker room yeah. that he's not supposed to be in. You know, he's like, oh, hell, I'm not supposed to be in here. I thought it was really interesting. Um, you know, um, this is a kid that turned pro when he was 15. Right. He didn't even consider Danny the university line like most guys do. Well, you know, like Ludwig Adberg is, um, you know, was, was the number one amateur in the world at Texas A&M for two years, and now he's just set the world on fire. Was it Texas A&M or Texas Tech? No, Texas. You're right, Texas yeah. Tech. Sorry, Texas Tech. And, hey, I got Texas. You, you're yeah. Right you know, state. Golf with Jay Delsing show. We're in the right state. Yeah. <laughs> but you're right. And so I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. You know, we've got another kid, um, uh, Akshay Bhatia, and, and, and he's tearing it up. And he's another kid that said, I'm not going to school. I'm – He's the number one amateur. I'm going to turn pro, and I'm going to figure this thing out. And figuring out, he is. He's yeah. He's his hats off. I I liked the the Tom Kim part. I didn't realize all the GQ stuff. I didn't yeah. realize all the and and you know that's a lot to handle for a 20 year old. Sure is. Yeah. I didn't realize he had all that too. You just see these guys are playing golf. You see him. Uh, you know, for me, I, I'm watching him Thursday through Sunday. Yeah. But most of the nation is watching them Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And you don't realize how much they're getting pulled at, tugged at from the various things that they have to do to make sure that they're being whole with their sponsors. And yeah, that's no, just what they have to do. Yeah, no question. No question. It's a it's a big pull. It's a big demand. And uh yeah, it's 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 it was interesting. I, I liked I liked that part of it. I um I would like to see some more obs- I I mean maybe it wouldn't sell. So maybe you know, getting somebody that you know people aren't that familiar with, you know, like what's your what is? I thought you, Damon was one of those guys yeah. in season one, yeah. and then you wanted to follow him in season two. Exactly. Yeah. You know, he I'm was, with you though. Some of the the guys that are not taking private jets, and this is how they're getting from tour stop to tour stop. Well, Danny, it just throws everything into a different realm. I mean, all of a sudden, your travel instead of you you drive your car to your private plane, they throw your luggage in, and the and the tournament meets you at the private airport. What about going to the airport? Sitting there for an hour you know taking two you know connections a, a, a connections you got to go you know it's not easy to get to greensboro it's not easy to get to jackson it's not easy to get to jacksonville i mean uh, you, there are certain places that don't have direct flights into jacksonville so it just you know there's an entire day of travel and what that does to your body sitting around lug- it's just it's it's a different animal all right that's jay delcy i'm dan mclaughlin we got a lot of emails coming up we'll do our email segment next You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing on this Sunday morning on 101 ESPN. Hey, Jay Delsing here, and I know I speak for all of we golfers. We're always looking to try to improve our game. For me, that means I go to one place, and that one place is Pro-Am Golf in Brentwood. Tom DeGrand opened his family business in 1975 with a goal of providing St. Louis with the finest in golf equipment, instruction, and technology. Whether you need a new rangefinder, your first set of clubs, or anything else you can think of, Pro-Am Golf has just what you're looking for. If you're a scratch handicap or you carry a 20 handicap, come visit Pro-Am Golf and inquire about a lesson from Tom DeGram. He's been fixing golf swings and making St. Louis better at golf for over 40 years. Go get your gear, lessons, or anything golf-related where I go. And that's Pro-Am Golf in Brentwood. You can also visit them online at Pro-Am Golf USA. That's ProAmGolfUSA.com. It's Pro-Am Golf. Proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delson Show. This is Adam Betts from Family Golf and Learning Center located in Kirkwood. Our motto is play your best golf. We have the best instruction for every skill level. 
two female instructors along with our eight PGA instructors. We're there for the kids and the adults who are starting to play and trying to refine their game. Family Golf and Learning Center features a double-decker driving range, grass tees, and a short game area, along with indoor simulators and a performance center. That's not all. Don't forget about our back nine, Bar and Grill. Find out how we can help you and your family. Head to FamilyGolfOnline.com. That's FamilyGolfOnline.com. It's Family Golf and Learning Center, where we make St. Louis better at golf. Redbird Heating and Cooling sponsors the Veterans Vocational Apprentice Program. Jed Dickinson, a retired Navy man, will teach, mentor, and sign off on educational and mechanical work hours to help you get fully licensed while you work and get paid by the company. What a great way to launch your career as a fully licensed HVAC specialist. Call Redbird Heating and Cooling today at 314-320-9507. That's Redbird Heating and Cooling. This is Paul Lazinger, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. Hey, this is Jay Delsing for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the PGA Tour use. SSM Health Physical Therapy has the Titleist Performance Institute trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screening on you as well as use the KVEST 3D motion capture system. Proper posture, alignment, etc. can help you keep your game right down the middle. We have 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. Golf with Jay Delsing rolls on on 101 ESPN. This is Jay's favorite part of the show. When we get done, he says, man... Give me some more emails. I love the emails. I love the fan interaction. So that's what we're going to do here. Golf with Jay Delsing, sponsored by Darty Business Solutions, coming to you from the Car Shield Studios. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Let's jump right into him. You ready? Oh, hell yeah, Denny. And, it, and, and folks, thanks so much for filling. I, I'm, I'm surprised every week that we get so many. It's just great. This is Steve, and he says, Jay, heard that you're going to be part of the Ascension Charity Classic. How is the rest of the field looking? I've been to all of them so far. Oh, Steve, well, first of all, thanks so much for the support. And we have done something special here in just three years. I guess it's actually four years, Danny, even though we didn't get to play one of the years. But we've 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 carved out a super special niche in the, the Champions Tour schedule. The players love the golf course. They love coming to St. Louis. We're going to get one of the better fields. Um, it's a little early, so there's not a ton of commitments, but we're going to have Steve Stricker is going to be back. Ernie Els is going to be back. Davis Love is going to get to play this year. Um, we're going to have... Um, uh, well, you talked to Miller Brady last week, who is the president of PGA Tour Champions, and yep. he said, we want to make this a regular spot no matter what happens. Yep. You know, we, We're not worried about sponsorship. We're going to get sponsorship. That's going to be fine, but we're going to make sure that we keep this thing going because it has turned out to be one of the best spots on tour. Oh, absolutely. He said there is no way we can let this thing not be renewed. So, And what we're talking about, folks, is Ascension. The current title sponsor is bowing out after this year. COVID has absolutely hammered these poor guys in their business, and so um, they're going to be out, and and hopefully, um, you know, we we we've got a few guys in the wings that are going to take this over and 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 uh, continue to contribute to this the overall you know success of the tournament. The biggest thing, Danny, is the charities, as you know, and it's the North County charities that um, uh, get rewarded with all the money that we raise, and so it's it's got a, just a huge impact on the community and. The fact that Steve's been to each one of them, I mean, he's not alone. We are our corporate support and just the cabanas and the skyboxes and all the things that we see out on the golf course make are, are, are an indication of how special the thing is for St. Louis and for uh, the, the not only the corporate community, but the community at large. Yeah, I've been out of Norwood with you and we play golf and then we go in and get a sandwich and I've had countless people come up to you. I've seen it that say, Jay, thanks. 
Thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for how you talk about Norwood. Thanks for making sure we're on the map, but making sure that uh, we're seeing these monies being brought back to our community. You you get that a lot. You're to be commended. Oh, gosh. I, I, Danny, I love it. I mean, this thing is a 10-run home run for me. I mean, to have it in St. Louis, to have it at the course I grew up at, to have it benef- benefit the northern co- North County area where I actually grew up, I mean, it's just – it's 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 a <laughs> – what's the word no brainer doesn't do it justice i mean i'm in yeah I, 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 i'm in it it means the it means the world to me it's a major for me so mary says that jay recent rain at my club <laughs> i know where she's going made the rough really the rough high is brutal how in the hell do i get out of the rough mary and here's the other thing danny we commented this last week when we played nobody's cutting the rough no, because no. they're letting it grow, getting it ready for the summer. Yeah, and it's and it's just you know the the, the mowers aren't out. It's still March here, you know. It's just, and you you almost feel like we're still going to get a snowfall or something before Easter. You who the hell knows? But Mary, it's just tough. I mean, first of all, what you don't do, Mary, and I don't know. Our buddy likes to play. Our buddy Joe likes to play the ball up. This Which is time actually of year. the next question, but go ahead. Okay, but but let's just assume, Mary, you're playing the ball as it lies, as like most of us do, Joe. Uh, but um, <laughs> get get in there with some loft, man. You got maybe depending on how thick the rough is, Mary, and how far down the ball sitting. You know, maybe you can get in there with a five wood. But I'm thinking six iron, something like that. And the big thing is get some angle in your backswing and your downswing so that you're not getting trying to smash through all that rough uh, before you hit the ball and get it out of there so get it back in the fairway if you can get it on the green it's a huge bonus but the big thing that we don't want to do is take two or three or four to get us out of there before we can get a you know a club back on it and, and get some control over it so to, even if you have to go down and get a nine iron and sacrifice that much distance you know chop that thing out of there get it back into the fairway and get that thing on the green and one putt that 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 thing get a par or a bogey so tim is asking about playing the ball up how legitimate is it do you, do you play it up the whole time in spring do you play it up just when it plugs how do you do it the way that i really look at it danny is play the ball up in the fairways right now so you hit a good drive you ought to have a good a decent lie and for most of the golf courses that have azoysia fairways they're just not there yet you know, and so the azoysia is still that tan, kind of straw-looking color, and it's and it's weird to hit off of because sometimes it'll look real fluffy, and you go down and get it, and there's nothing there, and it the the, the it's almost like the grass just disappears and just disintegrates. And then other times it'll be muddy underneath there. So I'm a proponent of playing the ball up in the fairway, probably D up in the bunkers too, because we just, we, you know, there's, I so don't you soften it a little bit. Yeah. It hardens with the rain yep. and you get the sunshine. So yep. and rake I, it, put it on the, on the, where you rake it. Absolutely. Get a decent lie. I mean, we don't, a lot of the courses D don't have their full staffs there, you know, so they're not maintaining bunkers. They're not, um, they're not, mowing roughs you know they just don't have it's not it's it's not full season yet we've had some great weather so we got some growing we've had some rain we got some grow but there's so i i that's what i think i mean up in the fairway is fine i I mean if you hit it in the rough you kind of ought to get what you get is my opinion so mike says uh jay not getting any distance on my driver i know it's the radio (laughs) but it's springtime and i'm getting zero distance what am i doing wrong right well so these high performance balls like the TP5 that we talked about, like the Taylor made, like the well, the Callaways, they just perform better under heat. And and so if this and until it gets over 80, and this has all been tested and proven, the ball's just not going to perform like it does. And then once it gets to 80, you're going to see that. That, that ball just stay in the air. It hangs a little more, and it, and it flies truer than what we – are seeing right now. Here's the other thing, Mike. Was it? It was Mike, right? Yeah. There's no roll. I mean, Danny, there. The, the ball. Great point. You, yeah, you're just going to plug. Sometimes it's barely going to roll. Right. It's soft fairways. No doubt. So, so D, your thirty, your sixty-five hundred yard golf course is playing sixty-five hundred, maybe more with with the wind, and so you're just not accustomed to that. So you got to take more club, club up. Take you know instead of hitting that six, hit a five. Take take a little extra club without those two combinations. Super super 
um, wet and it's not warm enough. Those those two combinations right there are, are worth at least a half a club. You throw wind in there, Danny, and you're talking about a club or a club and a half. A couple people have emailed in about the wind. How do you hit yeah. those low darts off the tee? Yeah, it's that's tough because the modern driver is not meant to be hit low. It's meant to be hit. So imagine this, folks. If you're um, – our best quarterback in the NFL, Pat, Pat, Patrick Mahomes. If he's quarterbacking and playing into a strong wind, he's not going to try to throw a lower pass, Danny. He's going to try to spin the ball tighter, right? Because that tighter spiral will go through the wind better than the w- little wobbly one that Jared Goff throws, right? So he's going to try to spin that thing. So if you just try to hit that ball more solidly, I would recommend that instead of a low darter off the tee. Now, if you're in the fairway, say you've got um, a shot into a par five. Now that's a different story. Now put you can put your three wood back in your stance a little bit and hit it more like you're you're going to hit a little knockdown shot, hit a little low punch thing that's going to stay a little lower. The problem with it is, D, is it it doesn't get the roll. It goes low and then it just goes. Yep. You know, because this, the ground is so soft right now. So it is just a tough time to play. The other thing that we haven't talked about, it's aeration time. So just going to ask you about got, this. So we've got all of our great golf courses that typically have really, really good greens, don't have good greens. And there's sand on them. And look, we got to do it because they're going to be beautiful in three weeks, four weeks, once we start getting some warm weather and we get some growing. But it's just tough. It's just a tough time, folks. You're gonna your putts are gonna bump. They're gonna bounce. Some of the greens aren't getting cut. You know, it's just you just gotta slug through it and and manage. Here's what I would say to answer all that: manage your expectations. Don't be so hard on yourself and so critical. The ball's gonna. The, the, you're going to have if you typically hit a good drive in a seven iron into a par four, you're probably going to hit a good drive in a five iron now. How do you manage then shaggy greens? Yeah. Oh man. You well. What, what you I do like for to, the break? What, what, you, I, what, what do you I have like to do? to do? You take less. You play less break, and you can hit them a little fur, harder. So that's what I like to do. But when I was playing, Danny, and we would go into the southern parts of the states where they would have back in the day, the agronomy wasn't quite as good as it is today, and so we'd have slower greens. I'd had I I had a I had a putter that had a half a degree more loft on it, so the ball got got up okay. a little bit above the. I wouldn't recommend that with most most people, and they probably don't even really know what the hell that means but that's what i would do and so what but don't change your putter play a little less break and you can hit the ball a little firmer you don't have to worry about it going as far by the hole either because they're they're shaggy i'm sure a lot of people are saying wait a minute loft on a putter but that is the case we've talked about yep. this before no there is loft on a putter right and then there's four to, typically if you have you, i was just reading where scotty i think chef's putter's got three and a half degrees loft on it, but the standard in a Scotty camera is four degrees and it is lasered into the, so think of it this way. It's lasered into the face. You want to have just a slight bit of loft, Danny, because otherwise you could get to the point where if you don't stroke that quite right, you might be smashing it straight into the ground and that ball's not going to roll. You want to get it up off the ground a little bit and tumbling just as fast as you can to roll into the hole. Mary is saying, I'm having trouble chipping, so should I just bump and run and forget everything else? Yeah, I, I mean, it's not a bad idea right now, Mary, especially with all the conditions being so difficult that we talked about. I mean, it's if you can try to figure out the right speed of your greens, here's the thing that happens all the time, especially if you put the ball in the air too much. With these airification holes, they plop in that hole and the whole thing and the whole thing goes to hell. Right. You know, and so it's not a bad idea. It's again, manage your expectations. It's a tough time of year. We've been inside all along. The weather's getting nicer a little earlier. These are all look at them as bonus times, guys, and just try I, I don't I don't even mind putting a little more just to try to help figure out the speed because as soon as the ball goes in the air and it hits the side of one of those holes i mean we had a shot the other day danny and the thing about straight right yep. it hit the corner of the hole the hole hit the left side corner of one of those holes and jumped straight to the right and you're like what are you gonna do is what it is it is what it is what what is it uh, the jay delsing meter for it's too cold to play 50 oh, i'm a 55 oh, oh, 60 yeah, what, what do you going. got i'd say if no wind, I could sneak out there maybe 55. If oh, you're a wuss. Oh, totally. You're a wuss. 100%. You were playing in cold weather all the time on tour. Come I on. know, and as a kid, 
I'll never forget one time yeah. my parents dropped me off. I couldn't drive. They dropped me off. It was, it was like April. And my mom's like, take your sweater. I'm like, I'm fine. Danny, uh, up front came in. Froze and it started your butt off. snowing. <laughs> and I lay down in a bunker. Where I, so I would stay out of the wind. I was so, I had never, my mom's like, what in, I'm like, yeah, didn't have my sweater. I was too cold to play. She's like, what the heck happened? Dana is asking, I've heard you guys talk about fitting your bag for your game. Yeah. What what exactly does that mean? Okay, Dana, so there's, there's fitting, there, there's fitting your set of clubs for your speed which is, I think, very important. And most places, Pro-Am Golf, they do it all the time. And Tom DeGrand, they do it all the time. And if you buy something from them, they won't even charge you. I mean, and if they charge you, it's the lowest price in town. I think it's $40. It helps you. So they put you on machines, Dana, and they figure out your speed and how much club head speed you have, and they get a shaft that performs at that speed. And then they'll also help you with the ball. There's a ball that will perform better at your speed. So a Pro V1 is made for guys that have the 100-plus ball speed or uh, club head speed. And most women don't have 100 plus ball speed so that, that so you you don't want an extra shift shaft you don't want a pro v1 there's a lot of things that you don't want but there's more things that you do want Dana and they will fit you now what i was referring to is certain players are longer off the tee. Certain players are better with their short games. Certain players need help. Like if you're not a strong wedge player, you can get an you can put an extra wedge in your bag and try to help you fill a gap. That say like like most of the time people will have an extraordinarily large gap in their wedge wedge game somewhere. Meaning like. The, the a Callaway set of clubs will come with an attack wedge, a, a pitching wedge, an attack wedge, um, uh, but not all sets do. And so sometimes there's a – we typically want, folks, a four-degree gap between all of our irons. When you get in the wedges, it gets a little wonky. I recommend all the time for people not having a 60-degree wedge, but maybe a 58-degree wedge. I don't think those extra two degrees aloft for a higher handicapper – matter. I really don't. And so you could take the 58 and start backing off and go down to a 54 and then work straight into your pitching wedge and cover most of those gaps. But if you're a player that's fond of your 60, then maybe we go 56, 52, and then down. So you, you've you just got to get those gaps right. And then the other area, Danny, where I see gaps get, get all out of whack a lot is in the fairway woods and the hybrids. Because folks, Really, don't hit a four iron anymore. Don't do it. Five iron's even questionable. We've got these hybrids that are so much easier to hit with. You can actually chip a little bit with them and use your putting stroke and that little weighted cavity back in the back of that of that um, hybrid helps you pop the ball right up in the air and get it rolling. And so you really want to try to figure that out. Drivers a must. Three woods a must. I'm going to even say a five woods a must. Then go start looking at hybrids. Maybe there's a three hybrid and a five hybrid, and then your next iron is a six iron, and you're off and, off and running, and you got all those gaps covered. How often do you use a hybrid to chip? Because you are a great short game player, but do you Thank use you. that much? No, I don't. Danny, you know my bet. I don't even like I'm one of those weird guys. I don't like hybrids. Yeah. I messed around with them back in the day. I still hit – my longest iron is a three iron. I still hit my three iron high. I hit it well. I've always been a good long iron player. But as I get older, like, I'm ready. Like, if you got something that will make it easier, I love my five wood in my bag. I'm I'm glad to look at a, you know, a seven wood, seven and a half wood, something like that, and get rid of that three iron. I looked down at that thing. It looks dangerous to me. <laughs> so you're not using it too much. Not too much. I mean, I'll, you know, I'll pull it out and take a whack at it. But, you know, and the you've old. you tried them, right? Yeah, I did. Well, and they've made such huge improvements in the last 10 years on those. I mean, the thing is, back in the day, all the hybrids had offset, and I am the non-offset guy. Most people love offset, and offset just means, Danny, the shaft goes into the neck of the iron, and then right at the bottom, there's an offset, meaning the, the leading edge of the iron doesn't 
doesn't line up directly with the hosel or the neck of the iron. It, it sits back a little bit. And what that does, Danny, is it helps slicers. It helps prevent slicing the ball too much. I've never been that guy. I've never had that issue. And I don't like the offset of my iron sitting back next to my ball when I line it up. So it's I've never been a fan of that. This is Kevin. He says, Jay, always hear about the players you played with growing up. Who did you idolize? Was there a player that stood out for you that you idolized? And then who do you enjoy watching now? I loved, I loved Jack Nicholas. I loved, I saw Arnold Palmer sit on a tractor and sell Pennzoil. And I was like, that guy is cool. And I <laughs> right. had never met him. And I was like 12 years old. I never even played golf. I'm like, that dude's cool. Then I saw Jack play and I'm like, I love Jack. My, one of my. Why did you love him though? Was he how he played or just how yeah, he carried himself? Yeah, it was how himself? he played. He was a champion. I wanted to be that champion. Like, I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be the best in the world. I wanted to beat everybody. I wanted to stand out there, and I'm like, I don't, you know, and, and it was almost just like Jack was, he, he was, everybody knew Jack was the, the man, you yeah. know, and, and I wanted to be that man. And then Ben Crenshaw was a guy that I just loved when he first came up. I loved his putting stroke. I loved the way he played. He he worked the ball. He hit a bunch of shots. Danny, I bet I got to play with Ben a hundred times. We got paired a ton. It was a blast. He is a great guy. Seems like it, such a gentleman. Oh my gosh, he's such a gentleman, a great putter, and it was really, really super fun to to get paired with him after kind of idolizing him so much. Who do I like to watch now? I love watching Rory drive the ball. I, lo- I would say my favorite guy to watch play right now is probably Scotty Scheffler. I, 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 I love how he's talked about his processes. Danny, we talked about this all the time when I said Scotty Scheffler is in this dangerous area, man, because he is, he is putting so poorly that there's a real chance if he's not stay, if he doesn't stay strong mentally, that this is going to leak into the rest of the other parts of his game. And he has to his, he kept trying stuff. He kept working on it. He kept staying in the process like he talked about. And look what's happened. He won the last two. He won by multiple strokes at the Bay Hill Club. He didn't have nearly his best stuff at players, finishes with 64 and wins that championship. And now he's just cemented in. That world number one. And Danny, it's funny. I got I to gotta tell people this story. So Scotty is, they're like, world number one. Scotty, you know, people are yelling stuff at you as you're walking by. And one, one guy says, Scotty, world number one. Great to have you here in Orlando. And another guy says, you only have 11 more years to catch Tiger. Tiger right. How about that? Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. 11 more years. To catch Tiger. I mean, Scotty might not even be on tour in 11 years. You just don't ever know. It was uh, announced on Friday, by the way, that Tiger is committed for the Masters. So he had the invite. He's going to play. He's past champion, all that stuff. So at least we know Tiger will be a part of this, which is always good. Danny, it looks like he won't play anything in March. Though. Yeah, I saw that. I saw ah, that. Man, I that... want to see him at least get one tournament in, maybe two weeks out, whatever it is, and go play. I don't care where he plays, but go play and then get a little tune-up for the Masters. I wish I wish so, too. I mean, so what do we have, Dave? We've got Valspar this week, and then we've got, what, Texas, Texas Open? Open. And then, so, I mean, he committed to, to I, I guess he's not going to play the Texas yeah. Open. The Texas Open is not... It's in San Antonio. It is not a super hard golf course to walk. It's not flat like the Players Championship, but at it, Jacksonville. But it is not hard to walk. So we saw the uh, Champions Dinner, which is John Rahm. It's <laughs> an ode to his country and his mother. And uh, I think if you and I won the uh, Masters, we'd have emos, we'd have Ted Drews, Absolute. maybe some toasted ravs. Absolutely, be an ode to St. Louis, wouldn't it? I got to tell you. What did we find? We found a hidden gem a couple of weeks ago when we were out. Uh, <laughs> Saucy's We found pizza. Saucy's Pizza that was unbelievable. So, so good. Oh, yeah. If you had to put one thing on your master's menu, one, what, it was a must, what would it be? Ted Drew's. Ted Drew's. Ted Drew's. You love that custard. I had Ted Drew's at my wedding. Yeah, did you? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. You got to have Ted Drew's. What about you? I have these potatoes. We have them. I don't know if you've ever had these potatoes. There's cheese. There's either an au gratin potato, which has all that cheese and onions and kind of a sauce in those potatoes, or we. my mom has this recipe. Maybe your mom made the same. 
But there's these shredded potatoes, and it's got onions and all this other stuff on it, and it's got cheese and cornflakes on the top of it. Have you oh ever, yeah, yeah, those are the best. Oh man, when I the, take it minus the onion. Yeah, well, yeah, when that, but when that topping, oh, it's gets the best. Kinda, uh, Kind of, the cheese gets gooey, and then yes. they, they get a little. Oh man, that's one of my favorites. And I, I've never met a French fry I don't like. <laughs> I love every French fry, man. I you'd go I, to Cane's and get French fries. That's what you get. You'd bring that to the masters. And you know that cane sauce is not bad. No, you'd lick the yeah. uh, bottom of the barrel for 100%, that. Hundred oh, percent. That's a that's a given. You could that thing is so clean. You could just reinstate it. You don't even need to clean it. That thing. <laughs> that I don't know what's in that cane, cane sauce, but there might be some sort of drug in there. It just it is it is. Damn it's good. Right up your alley. Yep. So here we go. A couple more emails and we'll take a final break. But uh, short game, we mentioned you are a tremendous short game player. Best I've ever seen in person. I mean that sincerely. Thank you. Now, yeah. I haven't played with a lot of PGA pros, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. It's 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 my favorite part of the game because I love being able to tell people you don't need to. You don't need to. You're never going to be able to hit the ball 350 yards off the tee. Nope. But. You can learn how to play the short game. You do not need strength. You you need a, a, a modest amount of strength to be able to play the short game. Who's your favorite player short game-wise? Who do you like watching? Oh, man. So I grew up at UCLA watching Corey Pavin. And the, the whole idea was like, oh, man, he could get the he could get the ball up and down out of a trash can. Pavin could get the ball up and down out of a trash can with the lid on it. <laughs> it was un- unbelievable. And, and, and Steve Pate was another guy that could just he – was, he was great with his wedges around the greens. And so I was l- trying to learn as fast as I can. I changed wedges as, almost as soon as I got out to UCLA because I had a terrible wedge in the bag. And um, so, man, I, I would say – I would say it's probably Pavin still because, Danny, he would look at 30-yard pitch shots as birdie chances. I love that. And then so I'm like, you're thinking of making this? And so I'm thinking of making it now. I'm like, hell, I'm going to make this thing. Sure. You know, and he'd get shots that he's like, I can hold this. I'm like, okay, let's, you know, and and he'd, you know, hit it six inches and be like, dang, I pulled it. And I'm like, Oh boy. Yeah. I got a long way to go. So those were the guys that were so influential. Brad Faxon's a wonderful short game player too. I played a lot of rounds with Fax and just a really super, super soft hand, super creative. And when he got the putter in his hand, it was lights out. Final email is from Mikey and he says Mikey, I love it. Hey so Mikey. Mikey is uh, asking when I'm on the fringe, I don't know whether to putt or chip. I've seen both. I've yep. seen some people chip. I've seen some people putt. What should I do? I'm going to say this, Mikey. What are you better at? Are you a good putter or are you a lousy putter? If you're a lousy putter, chip the thing. If you're a good putter, putt it. Seriously, what the biggest thing is, Mikey, try making whatever it is, okay? I, I Honest to God, I don't care if you're 50 feet away. Danny, we've talked about this 100 times. you got to try to make every single shot when you get in there close. And it's it's just the way it is because your misses are going to be that much closer to the hole. So if you're a good putter, get that putter in your hand. If you're a mediocre putter but a bad chipper, putt the thing. What do you do? I like to ch- – it just depends. If it's if it's clean fringe, Danny, and I only have a foot or two to go, I'll, I'll often putt. But other than that, I chip all the time. Interesting. Yeah, try to chip. And we, you and I have a special chipping game that we do. We have a we have a bunker game that we have on the yeah. side. We have a chipping game on the side. We, we have a fifty foot putt game on the side. We have a lot of junk, don't we? <laughs> a lot of junk. I love the junk, man. It makes it fun. I remember at the Ascension Charity Classic, man, <laughs> when I hold that shot on fifteen, I looked over and you had a hundred dollar bill on your hand. <laughs> I was like, man, that game's is that game on now? I all I needed was the TV to go to me and yeah. then showing a hundred dollar bill and handing you as you go to the next tee. That was so <laughs> awesome. Man, I laughed. I was standing over my tee shot at 16 still laughing. I'm like, that is so good. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin again. Thanks for all the emails that come in at jay at jdelsinggolf.com and we'll wrap up the show in just a moment. Hey St. Louis, Eddie McVeigh here from Maggie O'Brien's. When you head downtown for a concert or cards or blues game, and now for the St. Louis City soccer game, please come see us at Maggie O'Brien's before and after your event. Take our shuttle to and from or stay in-house and watch your favorite team on our multiple high-def TVs. We look forward to seeing you soon at one of our two locations in Sunset Hills on South Lindbergh 
or downtown at the corner of Market and 20th Street. Union Station is next to us. Are you driving an out-of-warranty car? It's only a matter of time before your out-of-warranty vehicle is in the shop costing you thousands of dollars. Auto repair costs are up nearly 20% from last year, which is four times the rate of inflation. If an unexpected breakdown happened today, would you be ready for that? Well, now you can be with a plan through CarShield. Even if your car is just over three years old, it's still prone to expensive costs. Your car is more than just getting you from point A to point B. Traveling by car is a way of life. From picking up your kids to going to a new restaurant, cars are a daily essential. When you enroll in a car protection plan through CarShield, you can look forward to the following. The price will never go up no matter how many claims you file or no matter how high the mileage on your car increases. CarShield offers protection plans that start as low as $100 per month. That's $100 per month. They have repair coverage for up to 5,000 different parts of your vehicle. Plus, when your car breaks down and you're stuck on the side of the road, you get 24-7 coast-to-coast roadside assistance. You also get complimentary towing and rental car options. CarShield has my back when my car breaks down, and they can have yours too. Call CarShield today at 800 465 6550 or visit carshield.com. It's CarShield, proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. For the best in Italian cuisine in St. Louis, look no further than Paul Mano's, located in Chesterfield. It's traditional Italian cooking, and their best ingredient, it's their tradition. It's cooking like Paul's grandmother used to make and like his mother still prepares today. There are no corners cut at Paul Mano's. From greeting you at the door to the pasta you'll share with your family, Paul Mano's is committed to bringing you their very best anytime you share a meal at their place. It's Paul Mano's located in Chesterfield. Darty Business Solutions has been enhancing the business of our customers for the last 37 years. How do we do it? Through our expertise in technology, better use of data and analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. We roll up our sleeves and collaborate. We build applications and effectively communicate with our partner clients to bring their goals and objectives to the finish line. Our award-winning Access Point program is a community game changer. With nearly 100 students in the program, Mostly young African-American females are making between fifty-five dollars and $60,000 per year right out of high school. That's right, fifty-five dollars to $60,000 a year right after high school graduation. That's when they begin their training. CEO Ron Darty believes the talent is equally distributed, but access to that opportunity is not. So here's Access Point, providing more and more opportunity for those in and around our community. It's Darty Business Solutions. Family Golf and Learning Center. No matter your age or skill level, Family Golf and Learning Center, located in Kirkwood, has something for you. They've got it all. PGA and LPGA instruction, double-decker driving range, par-3 golf course, trackman simulators, a large short-game green design to help you with all your shots around the green, bunkers, rough, and Zoysia fairway pitching. And now open the Tahoma Bermuda Grass Tees, the best turf to hit from in St. Louis. It's all at Family Golf and Learning Center. To schedule a lesson or to find out more, visit FamilyGolfOnline.com. That's FamilyGolfOnline.com. Family Golf and Learning Center. We make St. Louis better at golf. Final segment on Golf with Jay Delsing. That's Jay. I'm Dan. We're presented by Darty Business Solutions. Coming to you from the Car Shield Studios. And Jay, before we say goodbye, one of our great sponsors has an event coming up, a race, and a chance to make a lot of money for a great cause. Yeah, absolutely, Danny. SSM Health and Physical re- uh, physical Therapy and Rehabilitation are great, great peeps. Um, they've got Run for the Mission. It's on the 21st of April. It's down at Creve Corps, uh Park. 
Uh, check-ins at 745. It's a 5K. The race begins at 830. Uh, they've been doing this race for years and years. This year, the uh, special cause is Colton, Colton's cause, and uh, it's a really cool cause. So, guys, um, just you can put um, 10th Annual Run for the Missions. It's their 10th year anniversary. Just Google that. It'll give you all the information you need, and you can raise some money for a great cause and get yourself a little more fit. All right, covered a lot on this show. Golf with Jay Delsing. It's heard every Sunday from 8 to 10 here on 101 ESPN. And, Jay, how do we end the show? Hit him straight, St. Louis. I'm delighted to welcome the Amateur Players Tour to the Golf with Jay Delsing show. The APT team has worked so hard to establish a national golf tour for amateurs. Folks, don't miss out on this opportunity. If you love golf and ever wondered what all the fuss about tournament golf is, then this tour is for you. We just released the 2024 schedule, and it is a beast. There's 21 events currently in the metropolitan St. Louis area with many more to come. But check out these golf courses. Paynes Valley, Ozark National, Stonewolf, Ambrier, Persimmon Woods, Gateway National, and a 36-hole event on Norwood's West Course, and many more. Okay, so the courses are certainly cool and nice, but what's really neat is the way the events are run and how they are run. The APT team does a fantastic job of closely monitoring handicaps and ensuring a good and fair competition. There are five divisions, a year-long points competition, major championships, elevated events, and much, much more. Right now, there are over 6,000 members in 41 different local chapters across the country. And all that's happened in just over five years. Join now and don't miss out on the best tournament golf in the country. Run for amateurs by amateurs themselves. Go to amateurplayerstour.com. That's amateurplayerstour.com. If you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, any maker model, then you need to visit the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. They are the official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. My daughter and I both drive vehicles supplied by Colin and the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. And it's because we know we can trust them. They made the car buying experience painless and easy. And their customer service is second to none. Every single step of the car buying experience was taken care of for us. You can reach Colin at 314-966-0303, and he will answer all of your questions and put your mind at ease. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood has new or pre-owned vehicles to be purchased or leased, whichever you prefer. Once you visit the Dean Team Volkswagen on Manchester in Kirkwood, you'll be a customer for life because they will treat you like family. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, the official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show.